Good day, everyone. Today I'll be trying to explain to you what catastrophe modeling is. Catastrophe modeling. So, as the as the name implies, it's the assessment of catastrophe risks by typically undertaken by insurance companies. So, these catastrophes could be either natural naturally occurring ones, such as earthquakes, cyclones, or it could be human-induced, such as terrorism. So a good way to understand what this is, is to look at uh, it as a tool. So let's call this cat model. This, this is the tool in which catastrophe modeling is performed, and cat for catastrophe for short. So it incorporates four basic elements. The science behind these natural perils, such as earthquake, cyclones, floods, and so forth. You get the picture. And the next component involves collecting data about either the claims experience by these companies, insurance companies, and importantly, where their buildings are, where they wrote their exposures, okay? So this is like the buildings. And then after that, we uh, incorporate engineering knowledge, which is the vulnerability or the resilience of these exposures to these perils, okay? So you can see how the things starting to fit together. And lastly, we look at financial structures. financial structures which is for example we just want to assess the risk that is that this insurance company is exposed to and we need to uh, remove the impact of excesses which if you write an insurance policy um, your client or the customer will take some of that risk so let's say it's going down to the customer excess you're going to remove these things or they might have Conversely, reinsurance, let's call that RI for short, reinsurance arrangements whereby some of that risk is also seeded out or given to other insurers. So this is just an uh, overall uh, first look at um, catastrophe and how catastrophe modeling will work. All right. So let's go down. All right. Next page here. And let's start with. Um, knowing the, the, the first few things that happen. The first step that happens is the insurance companies need to know where their exposures are. So where they are on, for example, a map. Are they in this area? Let's say that's a map of Australia, which is highly exposed to cyclone. Or are they uh, over in this area here? Let's, let's pretend that these are cyclone tracks coming here, or are they in this area that's more prone to bushfires during the hot summers? So knowing where, or maybe they could even be on a fault line where the earthquake uh, risk is higher in these areas. So you get a picture. First of all, we need to know where the exposures are. And then secondly, the hazard component. So these are all different components within the model. So this is basically the science behind and the understanding of each hazard. So for example, if we're looking at cyclone risk, we want to know where it's generated, where we want to know um, basically how, how we want to simulate real, uh, reality. Um, by using a catalog, what they normally call a catalog of events, of cyclone events, yeah? And this, and each event will obviously have um, uh, parameters, such as for cyclone, you'll be looking at peak wind gusts, wind speeds, or um, even the pressure, central pressure, where they track, and so forth, right? 
Okay, so, and this is typically a re really complicated exercise and it's done by PhDs and, and peril experts. Um, and, and they have a few model vendors out there that do this sort of thing and they get paid a lot of money. So thirdly, we need to know how each building, for example, let's say, looking at Australia again, we've got a building located there and we wrote a policy there and that building is struck by one of these cyclones that tracked in, that was formed there and tracked in. So just looking at this event, how do we assess the vulnerability or the resilience of this building? So and we'll look at what they call vulnerability function. And this is damage ratio on the y-axis damage ratio, D ratio, and this will be some kind of parameter. So let's call it peak wind gusts, because we're referring to the cyclone example above. Okay, so obviously it starts at zero, goes to one, and as the speed of this, uh, as, as the cyclone gets more intense, as you go over this way, your damage ratio increases so that's quite intuitive and people do studies around this to ascertain what you know uh, what the damage ratio is likely to be and, and, and provide some uncertainty bound. so like, for example if this let's say was a wooden building or, or, or a concrete building it would stand up more to a cyclone but let's say we're talking about a wooden building it would uh, it would fail a lot quicker at a lower wind speed when compared to the the concrete building, right? So you're getting the picture now. So that's in a nutshell what the vulnerability component is. And finally, we have the financial loss. So you have to somehow the financial loss or financial structures, how you impose that. So remember what we talked about, the damage ratio, say if a building is worth 100,000, they call that the sum insured or replacement value of a building. And if the, we have a damage ratio of one, that's it. There's a payout of $100,000. So um, it's as simple as that, but they normally talk about something called the ground up loss from the ground. So if you imagine that's the loss amount, 100k, maybe 5k is goes back to the customer, the actual owner of that house. That's an excess. Like you be familiar with this, and maybe the range uh, the in insurance company decides, okay, we 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 want to pass out some of this risk to the reinsurers. So that part goes out as well. So that's sort of what the financial module does. So um, just Loosely speaking, catastrophe modeling, as you can see, comes up with a number, um, a probabilistic number uh, of uh, uh, of how how risky uh, of 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 your overall risk to to the company. So, typically, they'll come up with something like uh, let's just bear with me for a second, and this is loss. So let's say. Going back to that cyclone example, many events are simulated in the hazard component. And for each event, there's a loss. And then, you know, when you do that again and again, you can build uh, what they call an EP curve or exceedance probability curve. EP curve. So that's quite intuitive because the return period here is just the inverse or one over your exceedance probability. So, for example, a one in a thousand year event, so it's a small chance of it happening, 0 0.001, one in a thousand year event, around here, you get a much larger loss, you know, of big X compared to, let's say, a one in 10 year event, right? Little X. So that's how um, companies, uh, you know, assess their risk based on these profiles of risk. And that's created by a catastrophe model. So I hope you found this uh, at least gives you some intuition in, into how these uh, catastrophe modeling works.